I did a bit of a preview for the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday declarations yesterday. This is a follow-up video for that. So this is specifically for Friday's full declaration, so the final declarations. I'll do a blog post with a write-up on there for the people on the page that still like that. But for anyone that wants a sneak preview as to what I fancy, price points, and sort of my method behind my madness, then this quick half an hour video should hopefully do that. I'll do the same tomorrow for Saturdays and then the day after for Sunday's declarations. And then if this tends to be any help for anyone, then I might continue to do it going forward. But any comments, feedbacks, appreciate it below. Any subscriptions to the YouTube page is also welcome. So thanks again for your support and uh, here it comes. Good evening. So following on from the video yesterday where I was looking ahead towards Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm going to give you another declaration to come through. My thoughts on each of those days. So in this particular video, we'll be looking towards Friday. I'm not going to waffle too much because I want to keep this as short as I can, but obviously want to include as much as I can. So before I said when I look at entries, I normally go for the weaker cards first. In this instance, I'll be going for the better to the worst just because I'm weird and it's the way that I roll. Um, <clears throat> now, this is... I can't lie and say this is my very first look at it. Again, to keep it condensed, I've had a little look this afternoon. Uh, I've got a couple of notes made in there, but I'll give you the same look through as I had earlier. Um, just thought I'd save myself some time in terms of, um, you know, getting the video done. So without further ado, the 1240 at Down Raw, it's a decent two-day uh, fixture. We know that Gordon Elliott likes to target the meeting. This particular race, there's only really two that's worth talking about. Farouk Delan, uh, lots of people would, probably thinking of him maybe as some sort of Ballymore-ish type. Um, yeah, potentially, I just thought his point form suggested that he was a dower stayer, and I think his class showed um, to effect for him to win his bumpers. So the fact they're starting at 2 mile 6 I've already touched on this many times about how good I think the stayers' novice programme is over in Ireland. I think this is a really, really nice uh, opportunity for Farrick Deland to get off the mark. Um, Grange Clare native of Gordon Elliott's. Now, that fell um, the last day. Um, and I think he was going okay in his maiden hurdle, to be fair. That run did come on good ground, I believe. So we'll peel this up. Uh, again, looking at notes, probably why I can quickly mention some of these bits. But also, I do have a fairly decent knowledge of the ponies and what's happened with previous results. But yeah, good ground there. Jack Kennedy was obviously on before he broke his collarbone. Um, he fell. If you go back to his previous form, the Jungle Junction form is okay. Um, probably... I underdo these bits and pieces now, but I think Jungle Junction's probably a 133 uh, rated hurdler, I think. Again, I mean, I might chuck this into the notes after, and I don't want to waffle too much. I'm aware that I'm probably already doing that now, but just to prove the point there, that 133 rated, so I'm not just making up as I go along. Um, Jason the Militant, they chucked him in grade two company now, and I've touched on this before. Big yards will often send their horses into graded company if it's sort of springtime for them to lose their novice status because they're not fully expecting them to win. So they think, well, we might as well stick them into proper company because if they do go and lose their status, then fair play to them. So he's going to be a little bit further ahead. The fact that he's had a run means, again, he's probably going to be a little bit further ahead than Farouk Delan, but the class element probably should stand Farouk Delan in good stead um, and ground as well. I think that's going to play a massive part in this. So it's yielding at the moment, which is pretty much good to soft. Um, I'd, again, it'll be more weather watch for these two, but Farouk Delan, Grange Calais are the only two that could possibly win this. Farouk Delan's going to be short, um, and probably rightly so. Grange Clare native, if the rain didn't come and the ground dried up a little bit, I could be semi-tempted with with him. I don't think I'd be wanting to play in this race. Noel Mead's got a couple, but breeding-wise, neither of them excite me, so it really is a match between them two. We're at a point now where racing post tissue prices are going to come up, and you can see there, four to five Farouk Delan, five to two Grange Clare native. None of that's going to be interesting for us, it's definitely one to watch, though. I like Farouk Delan. Now, if we're thinking in terms of how we might play things, Albert Bartlett, again, the starting off trip that this horse is doing. Now, he is going to be a stay and chaser, but Albert Bartlett would be more on my radar than anything else for a horse like this. He's a 40 to 1 poke for that. So, we've discussed before about Bet365 cash out options. Farouk Delan, if you're interested in thinking tomorrow or Friday that he's going to go and hack up, you might want to have a couple of quid on him for the Albert Bartlett because, let's face it, if he doesn't win this, then he can be forgiven his first run. I don't think his price is going to change too much. And if you're not that impressed, you can always cash out. So, it's the way we feel about that one. Uh, Mayor's Novice Hurdle, Grade 3. I don't normally want to touch too much on the Mayor's races, but Anna Benina ran at Cheltenham. Well-backed. I think her mark is wrong. I don't think she's 131 rated. And obviously, when she comes over to Britain, she gets an even higher mark. So the mark's wrong for me for what she's done. Um, only a four-year-old as well. So when you consider that for like weight for age allowances and all those bits and pieces, I think she's probably high enough um, mark-wise 
to, to suggest that she's probably not as good as that mark is what I'm trying to get out. I'm just the only reason I've been a little bit stumbled there is looking at the bottom. If she's a 16 to one point, she's going to get smashed. I'm not saying that she's going to go and win it. Eight runner race. A lot of people look for each way value. If Anna Benina was 16 to one, you need to be back in her each way. I, I wouldn't do that, but if you're an each way player, brave way. Um, the Henry de Bromhead, Rachel Blackmore, Kenneth Alexander Angle. Um, she looks a nice type. Um, and I think she, I mean, she won pretty well first time up over hurdles as well. Um, it wasn't a strong race, to be fair, and it was over a little bit further. X point winner. I think she'll be all right with a drop back in trip, but it was, was a, a decent enough victory, but it wasn't a great race. Queensbrook, the bumper, champion bumper third. Her performance wasn't really that good, to be honest. Um, Davy Russell, I, I mean, if we, if we went back and looked at this as a clip, you can go back and watch it. I'm not going to stick it in here. She, it, like, it di didn't really look like she was going to get beat, but she was only hands and heels ridden. But she did just hold on, and there wasn't really any doubts for thinking that she was definitely going to get beat. But, I mean, she'll come on for that run. She is the one to go and beat. Price-wise here, you can see why they're, they're doing what they're doing for those couple. 11 to 8, Queensbrook, 9 to 4, Braveway. Probably looks about right. Um, this Politess is a half-sister to Don Poli. Um, she's earned her place in here from a couple of back-to-back -back real decent wins. She'll lose her novice status. Um, it's been extended to the end of uh, set, uh, sorry, end of November in Britain. So I don't know if that's the same over in Ireland. It probably is. So this has probably been a plan for a while out. So I would have thought maybe we'd get a price about that one as, a, as an angle in. Wouldn't be a race I'm looking to bet in. It'd be one to watch for definite because there'll be some pieces out of it. I think Anna Benina would be popular at that sort of price. Not saying that she'll be there or thereabouts. Um, I just think she'll be popular at that price. I think her mark could be a little bit too high. She obviously just recently ran, travelled to and from England. Uh, yeah. Probably a race to watch, but not get involved in. The Wicked Hurdle. Obviously, I'm going to talk about this because the boys' six shoot has actually been declared. This is a fantastic race, and I like the graded races because normally they're on level playing field, best horses win, and we have a bit of form. Earlier on in the season, when there's the grade twos, the grade threes, I feel like um, the, the penalties and the allowances that are given into horses can play a massive factor. So... We're looking down at the racing post tissue. You know, you can't always go by this. This is why it's, it's handy to not have the prices up here and make your own view beforehand. Um, I'm very biased with six shooter. You'll all know that anyway. I really do rate this horse. Um, even myself, he went up quite a bit for his win last time. He beat um, Kilfenora, I think, was the horse. He's 150 odd rated hurdler, but he's an older horse. Whether he's up to that anymore, I don't know. But he, he gave away six pounds, beat him easily. You'd have to say he's a 140s horse off the back of that. Whether he's got much more in him, I don't really know. But here, you can see he's getting the eight pounds. That puts him three pound different from Abacadabras. Match fitness, Noel Mead's flying. I would have said if he was eight to one plus, I'd be happy to back him. I feel as well because I'm slightly biased with this horse. I'm probably underselling him. He's available at 12 to one with Betfair. I can't see that price particularly lasting. Whether he's going to be quite good enough to win this, I, I don't really know. I think he probably could be. Um, I just think he looks like a bit of a value angle into this. Abacadabras is obviously the one that they need to all go and beat. And if he's going to be a champion hurdler, he needs to go and win this, despite giving weight away. Jason the Militant looks the stable second string. The fact that Paul Town ends on this one and Rachel Blackmore's on Aspire Tower. Jason the Militant does probably need to step up a bit as well. He's only getting the £2 weight-wise. You know, He's not on good terms with Aspire Tower or Six Shooter. But the more rain that comes, the more that will suit Jason the Militant than others, particularly Aspire Tower. And Aspire Tower, we know that juveniles going into open company after tend to struggle. So while I think he's OK, he was being battered in the triumph, wasn't he? So mm, w wouldn't be for me. You can see why the market's formed the way that it is. Now, Jason the Militant, they've got a 10s poke here. Normally, the, I mean, these two are probably priced the other way around in actual fact with the bookies. I like the fact there that we've got a few that are making the prices up. But one key thing to remember, seven runner races, so we're only fighting for two places. If there was one extra runner in here, you can imagine a lot of these would be shorter. Not just because there's another runner in there, but simply because the place terms as well. So bookies get scared of that. When you get seven runners, they know that the each way terms are probably in their favour, despite there being an odds on poke in here. Sometimes they're bad each way races. Um, but because there's a seven runners, we're going to get a bit more of an enhanced price. So basically, long story short in this race, Abacadabras should be winning if he's a champion hurdle contender. Abacadabras is a very good horse. There's no dispute in that, is there? Um, no denying it. He's going to have bigger targets as time goes on. He should be winning this. Let's just not beat around the bush. Six Shooter, however, is a horse that I really do like. I don't personally really feel like he would be necessarily up to this. But because he's priced as he is, about a 12 to 1 post, I think that's good value. So depending on how you play things, I think you could back him at 12 to 1 and you would be able to lay him on the day 
for shorter than that, I think you better lay them at eight to one or shorter on the exchanges, which means you're probably going to get four times return on investment um, for your stake for a free roll. So it's an ARB as far as I'm concerned, and I'd be happy doing that. So let's just say you had 25 quid on it at 12s. I'd be fairly confident that you could be running a free roll for 100 quid. Worst case, you could free roll for probably 50, and that's laying them at 10s. And then if it, if it really came to it, you're going to be able to get your money back if not running for a smaller stake. And I'd rather be doing that than risk money on backing ab abacadabras at a short, short price. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's the way that I see that race. It's just going to be really insightful for the future as well. Uh, the other thing with six-shooter is stepping back in trips not necessarily a positive for him, but I don't care. I think he's good at the trip. Um, beginner's chase, Envoy Land. Let's not talk to about this too much because he's going to be a tens on poke. January Jets, reasonable point form, not really done it in the course. Mo uh, moratorium might end up making the, the book as well, but I mean, none of them have got a chance. Envoy Land wins this. Tongue tie on for the first time could be a bit of a warning sign for a few people, but did the same as Sam Crow. I know they were coming in with slightly different prep, but don't be worried about Gordon Elliott runners having a tongue tie. Shattered Love having it when she he won the marsh. Um, Sam credit when he won the marsh, so don't necessarily be worried. But he shouldn't be losing this. If he did lose this, it would be nothing to do with the trip or anything like that. There wouldn't be excuses on that front. Um, we'll let him go and win this, and then after at Christmas, hopefully he'll get beat, and then we'll still end up in an RSA. Um, we're not interested in the handicaps. Uh, the bumper, 410. Um, it's not... This wouldn't be like a real golden bumper where I think we're talking about future, like major future winners, like graded winners and all that sort of stuff. But it's really worth mentioning here that Gordon Elliott, Jamie Codd, just the two names is going to attract attention. So Chemical Energy will probably be short-ish, I think. Um, I don't think his bumper was very good. So I think if he's short, then this is going to open up the opportunity for something else. So I want to look for something against that. Any given Sunday, uh, any given Sunday um, one with a, uh, with a well, like one with a bit more than it, like the winning distance was suggested last day. I watched it and I thought, yeah, that could have won a lot easier than it did. It was only a shortish distance there. It was actually quite a cute ride by the jock. Um, fairly keen. So you, I know this is a small field, but you think they'll go a bit faster because potentially they, they think they're better types. Um, that could be interesting. And there is Felix Younger. I think the Grand Dam's responsible for Felix Younger. So there's fairly decent breeding in there. But on Eagles wins, does carry a penalty. Now, because of the age difference... Um, it will carry some extra weight because of that. We can see this at the top here. Um, he carries four pounds extra for that. And then because he's won two bumpers, he'll carry, instead of a seven pound penalty, he'll carry a 10 pound penalty. So he's carrying seven pounds more because of those things. But he's another horse I really like. Now, Fernie Hollow took three attempts to get off the mark before it went and won at Cheltenham. He was behind Fernie Hollow. So let's be fair, that's solid form. Statler, another Willie Mullins horse, is a race that I like. Now, he was getting a stone from Statler, but beat him. Um, and then his bumper win earlier this month on better ground, which you look at his previous form, you think that might not suit, was impressive. Like, he won easy. So despite the penalty, all of that sort of stuff, I feel like chemical energy for Gordon Elliott's going to be priced short. We might get a price on this in, on Eagles wins. Not saying it's a, a lump job, but it would be worth a punt. Given it's a small field, and I don't like the bottom two at all, um, I'd probably say that if you could get... It's tricky. Four to one about on Eagles wins is definitely worth a play. Probably three to one would be about right in terms of temptation. But yeah, four to one plus on Eagles wins, I'd be uh, happy to go in for that. So we've covered down Royal for Friday. We'll move on to the better class racing at, well, it's a bit of a mix between Weatherby and Utox, to be fair, this time round. Um, Weatherby's got the nice meeting across the two days. Utox has got just as many races of interest. There's three at each that I'm really looking at, but there might be a couple of extra ones we'll just chuck a note in for. So... Again, the handicaps aren't really going to be doing a lot for me, especially these lower rated ones. This novice's chase here, we've got the four runners now. Shamblu was really, really impressive on chasing debut. That was over two and a half. Steps up to three miles here. Don't think he's ever gone over three miles, even over hurdles. We'll just quickly pull that up. Um, no, two mile five is the furthest. That was when he got beat. Um, this is the Leamington novices or Leamington novices, wherever we say it. Um, and then he got beat, obviously, in the Ballymore. So the step up in trip, his better form maybe is it a bit shorter. I think he probably will stay. Good place to find out. But he'll be sure, uh, not necessarily a, a good thing, as he might suggest. Hold the note, really interesting runner because he's a second season novice. He has got the best form in the race, to be fair, because he was second in a grade two chase. Um, that would have been at Warwick. So we're two for gold. And I really did think that Hold the Note was going to win that day as well. Um, good form there. Even at Cheltenham was fairly solid form. I think his mark of 146 probably is as, as fair as it could be. 
one really interesting thing with him is he has got an entry in the Hennessy, the Labrit Trophy. So whether this is a prep run into that and they don't want to affect his mark or whether they don't care, they're just going to run him here and, and, and then see how he gets on for after, I'm not completely sure. But being the sceptic that I uh, ever am, I just wonder whether they're going to be going all out of Holden Oates or whether this is a prep run for the Hennessy. If they were going all out of him, I would say that Holden Oates the one to beat. Racing Post probably got it right there with the prices, although I would have liked to think that bookies would put Chamblou in a bit shorter and you might have got some value on Holden Oates. But if it's priced the way that it is there, that does us a huge favour because you can't back Holden Oates at those prices. You'd leave him. If he gets beat, you'd think, oh, well, do you know what? I might have a little nibble on him for the Hennessy. Price isn't going to shorten if he gets beat, let's be fair. Um, it doesn't automatically mean that I'd want to back Chamblou in here. Again, I think he's about the right sort of price. I.K. Brunel stayed on nicely behind Coloni. Uh, Paddy, uh, sorry, Paddy Brennan. Fergal O'Brien's horse. Paddy Brennan probably would have been riding. He does want further. He'll stay nicely. Whether he's good enough to be up to his current mark, I'm not absolutely convinced. And that does leave him a little bit to find with the other two. Chamblou obviously does have the winner's penalty, though, so that brings him into the equation. And Snow Leopardess... Um, Ran okay behind the butcher said, I think it was. Um, you'd just be disappointed if she was good enough to win this. But small field, you know, stranger things have happened. She's not a complete and utter rag with her allowance. So the way I see that race is no play. Chamblou would be the one that would probably interest me the most because he won so well last time. Um, I, if the prices were around about this, then that's where they should be. If Chamblou was a bit bigger, I could be lured in, but I probably won't be. Hold the note is, is the eyes on as well because... If he, you know, maybe if he doesn't run so well, could be a lineup for the Hennessy. So we want hold the note short, basically. If hold the note was five to two or bigger, we'd have to back him. Um, is what I feel with that. A um, couple of handicaps. This handicap chase the listed race. I don't want to go for it because it's not. I've just, there's just too much other stuff going on. But two for gold that we touched on there with. Um, Hold the note, the form's there. It would be one of those that if hold the note goes and franks the form, then two for gold there, running off of the same mark, even though he beat him by half a length, would potentially scream that he's well in. And vice versa, if hold the note doesn't run well, and then uh, two for gold does go and run well off of that mark, then it would reiterate to me that they're holding on for hold the note for the Hennessy. So there are races, two in the, on the same card, that could be feeders into each other. Um, we'll, we'll just have to see different trips. I get that. Um, and again, you'd think for two for gold, maybe it's a, a line in for that prep run. I've got a feeling, uh, we know with second season novices, it does a big favor, but yeah, he's also entered into the Hennessy. So you maybe think with his run being a shorter trip, it's a prep run for two for gold. Um, anyway, I, I peeled on the pair of those. We'll, we'll see how things go. Two for gold run. Okay. in the Venal town at Ascot as well. So, hmm. Interesting enough anyway. Um, the juvenile hurdle, I mean, it's, it's a fairly good-looking race, just in the fact that you can make a case for quite a few in here. I have written quite a lot of notes on this one to publish on a blog post. Uh, basically, shoulder on parade that's got the 136 rating, which you know sounds very impressive, I think is overrated, personally. Um, Three quick spins came at market raise, and I think he just likes the track. That's going right-handed. This is left-handed. All his runs before were left-handed, were beaten, beaten, beaten. Hikonic that he reversed the form with, even though he's given weight away. Again, like I say, it was right-handed at market raise, and so I'd be confident enough to say that that horse is quite track-specific to, to rule him out. I'm not saying that's definitely it, but that's what I'd say with that one. Um, that, that Langer Dan won this last year for the Skeletons. Cafford... Uh, Sorry, Cabot Cliffs uh, spotted a hood on his debut, keeps that hood on as well, was pretty keen. So you'd think the step up in class with him going a bit quicker would probably suit him. Uh, Duffelcoat looks like he's the second string of the Gordon Elliott runners, given the fact that Dickie Johnson's on Longclaw. Um, what do we think about those? I must have written a note on there. Yeah. I'm just not sure. This Longclaw, it was gelded before his last win, I think. And his last win was his least impressive of the three. Whether that's close enough to, to be a factor in why he may be underwhelmed a little bit, don't know. Maybe the ground wasn't complete in his favour. But yeah, as much as Gordon Elliott sending a runner over, it wouldn't wouldn't be screaming out that he's a definite winner. Um, Hikonic that we touched on with Soldier on Parade. I mean, Hikonic looks okay. Um, runs in three pounds better terms on this, but seemed to struggle at market raising, and maybe that was the pace. So the step up in class probably 
worried a little bit. So maybe Hikonic's opposable. Midnight Legacy and First Impression with six to four joints on the last run. First Impression finished in front, but was quite a well clear of um, Midnight's Legacy. Um, and I think Midnight's Legacy is an entire steal. First Impression, they were both rated about the same-ish on the flat. I think First Impression of that duo... Um, would probably be the one that I'd prefer. And this is a race where, like I said, I mentioned in so many comments with so many of them, there wouldn't be a punting perspective in here, I think, unless this was the horse that was priced up big. I can't see the other ones, like the Gordon Elliott horse being big. That was his hurdle debut there. Probably wants maybe a little bit slower ground, would probably be suited on it. Um, he stayed on and he was headed towards the end. But, you know, it was a run round this track. It's a line in for this. So I don't, I don't know. Only seven runners again, so the win prices should be significant enough to be tempted. I'd say if this first impression was double figures, you could be tempted to have a little a little squeeze on it, but I wouldn't be going mad. I'd say 12 to 1 plus, I'd be interested in that, but it's a race to watch, not to get stuck into. Um, Novice's Hurdle, third time lucky is really the only one that's, that's going to attract a lot of attention here, I think. Obviously fourth in the champion bumper, so we're seeing the third and the fourth, Queensbrook and fourth, third time lucky on the same day obviously at different meetings um this doesn't look a lot deeper to be honest the first race was pish he was one to six shot it carries a penalty now i don't think this race is much better to be honest ewood park for ollie murphy and heskin they ran that in a bumper um and the, it, it's been in the yard for a while despite the fact he's only a five roll going six so you make you think that was a blow the cobwebs away and he was held up um uh, and he and he stayed on nicely so it was a quiet enough ride and he actually started to show a bit of potential was due to run at Stratford, but the ground's not slow enough there. So coming here, they're probably hoping for a bit, a bit of slower ground. So Ewood Park would be interesting to watch, but they shouldn't be getting near third time lucky. Um, Heart of a Lions, Alan King, J.P. McManus. He hacked up in his bumper, like proper hacked up. And I'm sure that he might be on a few people's trackers, but I, de I sort of dispute the depth of that. The horse that he beat, I know he was giving him weights, 97 rated now, I think. So pish. So yeah, that's basically it for Weatherby. You'd expect that one to, to go and win. And Utoxita, there is some interesting stuff here. I don't really know from punting perspectives what we'll get into. So we've got um, as a, a two, a, two divisions for the novice hurdle, and that's because it's oversubscribed. So there's a limit on the number of runners. If you get enough entered in there and they've got space to squeeze a card in, they'll do that. This race has got a few that's worth mentioning there. So Fulgarix, Colin Tizard's already said that this is a big stamp of a horse who's a stay and chaser for the future. Whatever he does over hurdles is a bonus. We know Colin Tizard horses may be a need in the run or, or the yard's not really been in great form, but that is starting to come out now, so they're starting to run a bit better. Fulgarix should probably be favourite for this race. Fulgarix, even against that yard form, probably should be winning this. Black Finch that's wearing the cheek pieces for the first time has come second quite a lot. You might question his genuinity after that or his honesty. Because of those seconds, I wouldn't be too harsh on him for that. This looks winnable from him from a perspective. So, again, he should be fair enough, to, like far enough down the head of the market. Uh, Mr. Katanga for Ollie Murphy. I think this was with Harry Winton before. Um, so, strange that the Brooks... Yeah, he's gone from one to the other. Maybe a change of scenery to do something with him, but I wouldn't be screaming out to be looking at him. The big stings of horse I saw at Harry Fry's. He is a big horse. Obviously, the name says out Scorpion, uh, by Scorpion, however we say it. Um, yeah, he'll be one that they'll just go hurdling for the sake of it, just stepping stone for chasing. So, full Grix would be interesting in there. You'd worry about the Tizard form slightly. It depends how they price it up, but you'd think he'll be short enough anyway. Second division is more interesting for me, basically because of one horse and one horse only. There isn't really anything in here to be beating him. It's getting the cue. Um, we know how good this horse is from, from what he did in his bumpers. Missed last season, but it was only a minor niggle. It'll be good from this sort of trip upwards. I think middle distance, but like Ballymore ish would be his bag. He will suit a track like Cheltenham as well. Um, so... Yeah, I think getting the queue will be interesting. And it's another one for Harry Fry that, that looks like it could be going quite well. I want to keep an eye on for a bit, I think. Uh, Mayor's Maiden, I wouldn't be interested in a panic attack. People are going to be looking at that, aren't they? Because it was with Willie Mullins before, but just forget about it. They're pish. None of them are going to be top grade. Uh, the Bumper, not very often you get one of these in the middle of the card. 235. Baby Ben for Graham McPherson is a full brother to Ask Ben. Now, they love Ask Ben. He'll be going novice chasing this season. He'll be an interesting one to watch. Fishkoff's the main one. Again, it's those silks. Again, it's Harry Fry. His point win was good form or okay form, I think. Um, the winner of that ran at Punchestown today on Wednesday, so when we were recording this, was well beaten by um, a Jessica Harrington runner 
over two and a half, but you know, he came second, was best of the rest. I think it's okay form. Um, in the right hands, track Utox aware, King Roland, um, a few others, Neon Wall, things like that have come and won a, a maiden uh, or bumpers here. So it's track that Harry Fry likes to send them to. And it looks a pretty weak racing on his land and call in and Pirate of the Sea have got some some winners in their family, but you'd fancy fish off to win this. 15 to 8 sort of tissue price there from Racing Post. I suspect you might get a bit bigger than that first show and then he'll be backed. So I personally wouldn't be wouldn't be looking at punting him. Um, I could maybe be tempted if he opened up at threes or something like that, just for the fact that I know he'll probably go off six to four poke. Um, if he was five to two-ish, you could again be lured in. But just if you want to keep an eye on first first shows for these sort of bumper horses because if they're fancy they're going to get smashed up and bet 365 is your best back for that as well because you get the bogs baby ben there 20 to 1 poke i mean i'm not saying because of those breeding that he's going to be in it or there but i don't think it's a very strong race so could be tempting at a bigger price but yeah the way i'd be looking at it is just to watch that race unless fishkov was five to two or bigger first show then i'd be on a bit of that now the kalahari king beginners chase um decent race you'll notice the difference in how the book's done with this so again it depends on who the runners are in the race on how it's gonna be priced up but we've got eight runners so you will not really see as much of a um i'd say generous book from the bookmakers now they're they're all normally going to bet to around about 110 percent. so you'd think it wouldn't make too much difference but um yeah, just from especially how they first price up. They're not going to be as generous with horses because they don't want the each-way value. Doesn't apply as much with this compared to the Wicked Hurdle as, as other like eight- and seven-runner races. The Wicked Hurdle is slightly different because you've got an odds-on poke in there, so they tend to be bad each-way races if you have the eight-runners. But anywho, I'm waffling about something that doesn't need to be waffled about. King Rowland um, was disappointing at Cheltenham. There's no getting away from that, but it transpires that he actually fractured his pelvis, so fair enough. We'll give him an excuse for that. Travelled like the winner, was an absolute beast that day. He is an absolute weapon of a horse. I love this pony. Um, wins this race. It's two miles, and he does want a bit further. So that's the only slight thing. And maybe with the fact that he's had that injury, they're trying to nurse him back into it. So with all that said, I suspect King Roland would be short anyway. I think he'll be a sub two to one poke. If he was seven to two or bigger, I'd be tempted to chance the fitness and, and the coming back run to back him. I don't think he'll be anywhere near that, but if he was, I'd back him. Gumball obviously had that race the last day. Um, he's a very buzzy horse. We knew that over hurdles. He, that sort of found him out um, behind Fusa Raffles um, and quick grab him, I think, was in there as well. But he's had runs. Uh, maybe the freshness would have come out of him a little bit. He can get away with it round here, so maybe a bit more. Um, the fact that he's been around the track already. Um it's just it's difficult as a jockey to, to be on Gumball to be able to pace it, I feel, and maybe so it's going to stay on. Get away Fred and Bold Plan are both ex uh, chasers, sorry, pointers. They'll do well in this fear. Cheddleton will do all right as well. But if you look at the ratings, it's fairly matched. King Rodan's the one that I'd have all my eyes on, though, to be honest. Um, and it'll be a price sensitive thing. So, like I say, seven or two plus I'd be going on in King Rowland, factoring in the fact that it would be first time up. He needed the run at Newbury last year over hurdles. That was in a fairly decent race, though, to be fair. So, Again, this isn't a Mickey Mouse race they've shucked him into. Probably wants a little bit further in time as well, but he'll get away with it around here. Race will probably be set up to him if they go quick through Gumball because he has got some speed. He might just need the run, but um, could could be tempted. And the thing is, we might get that 72 about him. It's not a pie-in-the-sky sort of number because we've got Gumball, who's officially higher rated. They're running off the levels. Gumball's got the experience around the track. So by rights, Gumball should be fav. I'd probably be looking at, if I was pricing the book up, that King Roland should be sort of seven to four, two to one, and Gumball should be around about the same price. Normally, the bookmakers would let the weight of money sort of manipulate and 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 decide where the market should be. But King Roland should be shorter than seven to two. If they make him seven to two or bigger, I'll be tempted to go in. If he opened real short and then he drifted out to seven to two, it's a slightly different proposition because not that Harry King's necessarily a punty stable, but you'd rather see some support than a negative drift. So you want to be looking at first shows in this market, see how they're formed, get a bit of a feel of it. It isn't just a two-horse race between those two. Bold plan, get away Fred, could go all right again. Get away Fred, Colin Tizard, they maybe need the run. Um, it's a nice enough race. There's no real surprise winners in here, I don't think. The good thing about that is only one horse can win it, so there'll be winners that come out of it after. It's an absolute certain race to watch to find out for clues going forward. Um probably will end up being a no play and that's probably the best advice for it so that's friday's gone through quite a few races as you can see i'll do the same tomorrow for saturday with a few price points in there we might have a few more bets over the weekend there's a few handicappers i've got my eye on as well but any comments feedback and your selections below would be appreciated and yeah thanks very much for listening to me waffle on again